Let's talk about the 2013 movie Evil Dead. As we ramp up for Fede Alvarez's upcoming Alien Romulus, I wanted to get a taste for his directorial eye before I see his take on the Xenomorphs. Given that the Alien franchise was founded upon a strong foundation of horror, let's see what brand of horror Fede brings to the Evil Dead franchise. Before we get rolling, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get more of this mean mug in your algorithm. Now, let's get into it. Considered a requel or remake of the original Evil Dead, director Fede Alvarez put his own bloody footprint on the iconic franchise with the redundantly titled Evil Dead. Long stuck in development, producers Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi enlisted Alvarez to take a stab at their beloved little demonic movie that could. With a fresh spin on the original, a group of young adults gather in a cabin in the woods to help Mia, played by Jane Levy, get through her heroin addiction and withdrawals. However, underneath the creaky floorboards lies a sick and depraved history for these unsuspecting nitwits to uncover. Fede's Evil Dead is definitely its own thing. There's not really much story going on, and the characters in this thing are the biggest bag of asshats you've ever seen. That's really the only bad part of the movie, is that these actors are truly only here to get disemboweled and dismembered. Do not go into this thing expecting the story to be mind-blowing. It is a 2010s horror movie to its core, with just enough of the source material's creativity to carry it through. The longer I've watched and consumed horror, the more I've noticed that less scares me, and it takes more to really set me over the edge and give me that horror dopamine rush that I long for. Evil Dead aims to break down those boundaries completely and set new borders for how far a horror movie can go. Our denizens of this cabin are simply fodder for the malevolent forces unleashed by, wouldn't you know it, an overly curious, self-righteous white nerd. Wow. White nerds really need to shut up and stop opening the Necronomicon. <laughs> Adjusting expectations based on all this really allowed me to have a better time and especially appreciate what it does so well. Every scene felt so well constructed and planned out, perfectly gross and oozing with a sickening charm. Evil Dead has always been a swing for the fences, batshit crazy franchise, and this movie is no exception to that. You will see some imagery in this thing that will haunt your dreams and probably send you to the bathroom having to vomit. Alvarez and co won me over pretty quickly. He has a keen eye for direction, mimicking the original's patented zooms and camera movements, making it feel like a homage, but still original in how it adapts to source text. Jane Levy as Mia is by far the best actor of the film. She carries a lot of the emotional weight with playing the drug addict, then switching to demonic deadite nastiness, and finally to our heroic final girl at the end. How she goes from possessed to heroic didn't really make that much sense, but it's not supposed to. Her performance was so fun to watch and made me want to check out her other picture with Alvarez, Don't Breathe. I really liked the cinematic cinematography in this one. The cabin feels big and alive while also feeling claustrophobic and frightening. Cinematographer Aaron Morton has a keen eye for framing a scene. Something as simple as a water heater can become dangerous and malignant, with each torture device used on our characters delightfully hinted at visually scene to scene. For sure the moment where Mia burns herself alive underneath the scalding hot water had me squirming in my seat. That phrase perfectly encapsulates the movie's tone. <laughs> Evil Dead has always had a nastiness to it, taking Pazuzu from The Exorcist and ramping that vileness up to 11. It is interesting to see how it toes a line between being pretty frightening and kind of comedic. This Evil Dead is by far more frightening than it is funny. Though the sheer links that they go to for the gore and violence in this thing had me cackling with laughter the entire time. I kept writing down in my notes all the little visual cues throughout this thing, like the nail gun, electric carving knife, or the chainsaw. No frame is wasted in this. These visual cues are especially gratifying because they're planting little seeds, and we can probably guess that there's definitely going to be some limbs that get cut off. It's just a matter of how many and who's doing it. Gross Factor is absolutely the name of the game here. The sound design is sickening, with red flesh and piss dribbling all clear and perfectly in focus in your ear holes. You are really right there in this terror and carnage, and when one character in particular pisses herself as she's being possessed by a deadite, I felt a little bit weak in the knees watching that. This movie is seriously scary in its nastiness. It is so incredibly violent for an R-rated movie, but the visual and audio effects really carried everything home into making it a viscerally nasty, gross experience. The way the tree branches snap and gnarl at Mia's limbs as she tries to escape these drug withdrawals and subsequent demonic possession, we then see the Deadeye come upon her, penetrating her with this disgusting black tentacle. Ugh! It all started to feel very Japanese tentacle prawn up in here. The drug withdrawal talk is definitely good cover for a demonic possession story, but it does kind of fall flat. You're really just waiting for someone to utter, Your mother's a 
Brutal is a word that came up a lot in my notes for this movie, so I figured it'd be a good time to discuss how brutality works in horror. A movie like this was coming off the late aughts trend of torture porn horror like Saw and Rob Zombie's Halloweens. The brutality on display here is laughable, as already stated, but it's in that over-the-topness that the movie thrives and surpasses its limits. It transcends the idea of a brutal horror movie. It just is violent, and its merits rest upon these brutal scenes of fear and terror becoming totems of high art. Peter Jackson's Brain Dead, for instance, which I covered in my Six Essential Summer Horror Movies video, achieves a similar feeling, though in a more pure comedic effect. That may be too high of praise for a movie with a less than stellar script, though I do love the Deadite Possessed Mia telling Natalie that she can smell her filthy soul. God, I just love that line, but there's no reason for us to believe that this is true to Natalie because the character isn't fleshed out. The visuals are more important than the story. A huge weakness overall, but in aiding my point, the movie's look is impeccable and a crowning achievement. The sequence where the ground caves in and the nippleless, buttless, deadite woman comes for Mia is harrowing. There is blood everywhere, rippling thunder of mad red, and as she crawls, fights, and steals herself against the elements and violence, we can't help but shout and laugh and root for her. When the chainsaw blade finally snaps as she rolls out from under the red jeep, red dress, red jeep, is that something? Red, red, red. It's on. And the way she unleashes the pain of her life, the loss of her life, and the loneliness, that catharsis is worth the price of admission alone. I could pander about the ending's heroism and try to make it seem like it's this glorious thing, but the movie is hopeless. It's fun, it's crazy, it's a bad time, and it's incredibly well made. It is smarter than you're gonna be willing to give it credit for at first. It's doing something entirely unique while honoring its roots, and it's very gratifying for Fede and his excellent team to achieve something like this. I'm kind of stunned that this was in theaters to some degree. It's really that brutal. It was also a welcome return to a universe that I fell back in love with with last year's Evil Dead Rise. Also, that raining blood scene, um, Jordan Peele, did you, were you maybe, did you inspired or influenced a little bit by that? Eh, nope. Probably not. Also, also, I'm pretty hyped for Alien Romulus now. If Fede brings the ruckus like he did here, and Kaylee Spaney gets imbued with that same deranged magic, along with her already incredible acting chops, we're gonna be in for some sick and disturbing xenomorph action. Alvarez tested and proved his mettle here, and I'm pretty excited to see how he goes about bursting some chests. Also, maybe this is where Kaylee Spaney starts her transition to Scream Queen? Who knows? What did you think of 2013's Evil Dead? Is it a wasted deadite or is it worth your time? Leave all the comments below and don't forget to like and punch that subscribe button. Every little bit counts and I appreciate so much from the bottom of my heart you all watching these videos. Until next time, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Don't forget to check your hot water heater before you shower and... You're gonna die here, you pathetic son of